Hey guys, welcome back. I am Michael McCarvel and this is episode 43 of Fun with Fallen Flags. You can find the series of the YouTube videos um, on my channel and I'll put a link to that below along with a link to the Facebook group that I created which is HO Scale Tutorials and you can see up above here the uh, graphic for that. So feel free to join that if you're interested and uh, a lot of good content. It's a brand new group as of uh, early April. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get back to the project for episode 43. So in episode 5 we built the uh, narrow gauge trestle that you see behind me. In episode 19 we worked on the molds for the footers and uh, I've got a few of those cast and plaster. So in this episode we're going to work on um, paint, stain, weather, uh, chalk powders, etc. So I tried a bunch of stuff already and I just cut all that stuff out. So just to save time, um, I tried painting and I'll show you that. It didn't come out very good. don't like it. It, it makes it a little kind of gloss. Um, I did some staining with a dark color lighter color. Uh, that color's too light. And then I did some test pieces as well. Um, I even did some coloration with uh, some light and darker uh, kind of yellowish uh, bricks in here and some washes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go forward with what worked out on a sample piece and we're going to create a wash with a wash, <laughs> depending on where you live, uh, aged sand concrete. So let me switch here so you can see what we're going to do. So this is a uh, Model Masters aged concrete. Let me grab the right bottle. <laughs> um, so it's this color. Uh, this is the same color I used on the Coaling Tower in, a, in an episode a few weeks ago. So if you're curious to see what that looks like, um, I had painted the Coaling Tower this color. Um, this color, which is very close, I mean it's almost exactly the same. However, when this color dries, which I, I played around with, this is armor sand. So it's actually made for uh, military. It comes out a greenish color even though it's almost exactly the same shade as this. So uh, wet, they're almost identical. Dry, they look completely different. And the paint chips, of course, show absolutely no difference in that at all. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. That's our project. And uh, let's get started with that. Okay, to start with, we're gonna just mix a little bit of paint with um, some water. If you guys have seen my videos before, you know I live and die by Gatorade caps. <laughs> um, get kind of a thin consistency, almost like coffee, I guess is the best thing I could think I can come up with for description. Um, probably do two washes on here. Uh, this is going to soak into this plaster like crazy. Uh, it's very dry. These were cast quite a while ago. so, And we're just going to brush this straight on. Main thing is I want it to soak into all the cracks, which isn't really a problem with plaster. If anything, you got to make sure you get an even coat. I'm going to wash this whole thing. You can see it goes pretty fast. Uh, every once in a while you'll get a light spot in the plaster where it's a little denser. So the, the shade that is appearing is very light. We want a little more color depth, but I want to do a, I, I don't want to just paint it on. I want to do a wash. Uh, the nice thing about this is this 
plaster casting resembles a lot of the footers in narrow gauge country Colorado where it's uh, sandstone a lot of chips and pits and stuff in it uh, so the plaster actually resembles it really well I won't say it was perfectly intentional but it is one of the nice things about using plaster you get that rough rock kind of texture so all we're going to do is just wash this whole thing down I tend to mix up a little bit at a time I don't sit down and create an entire batch because I don't really know how much is going to soak in plus it's just kind of what I'm used to doing you can see this plaster uh, soaks up everything we're putting on it so that was the top and one side so we'll do that one more time Oops. let's do water first and we'll get the right amount of paint in there I'm literally just dipping my paintbrush in it and then thinning it with a lot of water a little bit more so this is the first step is just to color the plaster not necessarily uniform because we do want a little bit of variety in the tone uh, the other thing you gotta be really careful with when plaster it starts to get wet uh, it will start to rub off so I went a little heavier on the paint mix this time I'm getting a deeper color but I still I'm going to come back behind it with another coat. Also, you see it fade almost instantly when as soon as I put it on. That's because this stuff just soaks right into the plaster. Unfortunately, it takes a little while for this to dry because it is a lot of water. And not that much pigment. over the top one more time now this piece down the center uh, we're doing two trestle footers so on this trestle back here behind me it's the two bottom ones that we're going to add and then the rest of this is going to sit on terrain so we don't need a whole lot of these but since when I built the trestle I don't know if you remember the bents, the vertical members of the trestle, are all different heights just because the ground is all different heights. So in order to get the trestle to look realistic it's got a lot of different variation in it. So the footers, this one has a piece that sits up, the other footer has a piece that's recessed like this and the bottom of the bent is going to actually fit in here and that's the way it was cast originally I had made some out of wood bases like this one and that was the plan however I did, really didn't like the way this turned out so I kind of ruined the uh, wood base on this one and uh, what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to put that aside and I'll use it as a retaining wall or someplace down the road towards the back of a scene maybe it won't be quite so obvious um, but since these are 100% pl plaster these are just going to affix to the bottom of the trestle and uh, the weight is actually going to go on these two supports here on either side of the, the tallest bents um, I'm going to put a wood support underneath these two in the framework and then so these two in the center that are plaster aren't really going to hold any weight so completely modified my plan <laughs> of what I was going to do 
All right, so we're gonna let this dry. This is gonna take several hours to dry and you can feel it's already starting to get cool. So let's let this dry. Then we'll shoot it with a dull coat if we're happy with the color. And the dull coat will seal it. And then after the seal is on, then we can wash it with a black. And what that will do will be, it will uh, settle into all the crevices and also all the little bubble marks and the uneven pieces here. Um, it, the wash is gonna settle into that. But since we're gonna seal it with dull coat, it won't soak into the plaster. So we gotta seal all the plaster first. So I'm pretty happy with this coat actually, now that we've gone over it twice. So let's let this dry. We'll shoot it with dull coat and then I'll come back with the black wash. Okay, we got this thing uh, shot with dull coat. I uh, put two coats on it. Uh, there's still some light spots and um, good spots, but we're gonna shoot this with a, uh, after we shoot it with dull coat, we're gonna wash it with this uh, black solution. So it's gonna darken this up quite a bit. So I'm not too worried about the light spots. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Test it out, make sure we're still happy with it. Doesn't look too bad. It's still a little thick, so I had a little bit more water. And then we'll go to town. Kind of thin it on the fly, and keep in mind this is a black wash, and it is going to take a little bit of the darkness into the crevices, but it's also going to darken the color that we already have on here. So. So you can see on the, um, the areas like right in here where it's real grainy, the plaster surface is real grainy. Um, the black wash is really getting into some of those crevices, which is great. And our final step that we're gonna come back, we're gonna do a little bit of highlighting on the, on the wall, but um, a little bit of dry brushing and a little bit of dust on here just to give it a little bit of variety because it is it is pretty plain looking even though we've got this uh, wash on it I don't want it to just be one color even though there's a little bit of light and darkness to it I don't want it to be one color and there to be really no variety in the blocks so You can see that it's a little wet, a little bit of glare on it. It's not too bad though. Um, and then those these really dark spots in here, uh, I'm gonna lighten those up a little bit when we get to that layer. Um, I like to do a lot of layers of uh, what we do in weathering.
It's getting a little dark. I'm going to need to lighten this up a little bit. I still think that the solution has a little bit too much color. Uh, this this edge down the center, I'm not really worried about that because that's where the bottom of the bent is going to rest. Um, also, it's not bad to have a little bit of dark settle on the top here because that's really where the dirt's going to settle. So we can always come back and highlight that a little bit. You can kind of get at it a little bit because now the plaster is not quite so um, vulnerable to being beat up by our brush strokes um, after several coats of dull coat on top of it as a sealer. It's okay to have it a little bit of discoloration too. I mean, it is a trestle. It does have, um, this one's going to have narrow gauge steam engines rolling across it, so it's not going to be pristine. Um, really want to make sure the edges look good because one of these is going to actually face the viewer when they're when it's on my layout so I'll take a little extra time on the front so the one of these sides is going to be on the back so whichever one looks better is the one I'm going to face outwards the other one is just practice <laughs> honestly alright so that's the front side I'll come back. This this solid piece along the bottom, that's going to be buried. We're going to expect the ground to come up to the edge of that. Um, so the three courses of bricks here, those are what we're going to see. And then I'll come across some of this stuff and then we'll do a little bit of downward motion so it looks like it's uh, rain washed. I'm going to add just a little bit more water because I ended up diluting it as I was putting it on anyway. So, Oops. Big old spot. When we attach the trestle, we want to make sure we get a good glue joint. I like the way the, um, the plaster takes these little gaps there's lots of little grain in here and those are from the imperfections in the bricks that I chose to be the top course we'll thin this out just a little bit you have a little bit of time to play with it because um, it's not soaking straight into the plaster and I did coat all the sides really good so come back and do a little bit of highlighting on this some of these guys are just a little bit darker than I want them to be All right. So this is a good opportunity to add another method in here. Do a little pin wash. Let the black just touch, barely touch the edges where we want the pin wash to run. And it's highlighting all the crevices. Kind of like applying black mortar. Some of this may never be seen, but we will know it's there, which is why we do it. And if you have two sides that you like, um, 
you can pick whichever one that looks the best. So we're not really touching the surface of the brick at all. We're just dropping into the cracks. And then the pigment just follows the mortar lines and come back over the top and highlight it. It'll look a little bit better. If you wanted to, you could do the entire wall this way. And then not do the wash on top, but sometimes the wash does tone down the uh, surface of the bricks a little bit. couple little spots down here that didn't really get a lot of of the brick color they look a little white from the plaster you can add as much or as little detail as you want I tend to want to really spend a lot of time doing something like this real meticulous. Uh, I don't want to come back. So even those things where I look at and go, well, I don't know, will anybody notice that? I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Because I'm going to know it's there. Alright, so let me finish this up and once we're done coloring this I will do a little highlighting. Uh, same color, um, but I'm not going to dilute it like a wash. I'm going to use the uh, aged concrete again and I'm just going to kind of drag down a few spaces here and there where it looks a little dark. Um, this side is definitely a lot darker than uh, this side. So I want to lighten it up just a little bit so it's consistent. So let me finish this up and then we'll jump onto highlighting. Okay, so the wash is done. I'm going back over it and you can see on this side we've got good coverage inside the crevices uh, this side um, I want way too heavy on the wash so we're going to clean that up now good thing about castings if I really am unhappy I can just start on a new casting since I made so many of these but it's not that bad So I'm dry brushing the same color that we used when we made the wash out of, but since I'm putting so little on the brush, all it's really hitting is the high surfaces. So any of the blocks that got a coat of the wash and then the black wash on top of it and ended up fairly dark, the 
raised portions are all that's getting hit with the dry brushing, which is what dry brushing is. And it's toning down the blocks just a little bit. So you got the base wash and then you've got a black wash on top of it and then we're coming back with the uh, full strength paint just to hit the high areas but it takes away the like we're over here where this like for example this block here is very dark when I dry brush over the top it tones down that black so now we actually have kind of a three tone effect on it and I'll just run across all the surfaces so the darkness will definitely be in more of the shadows uh, sometimes when you start to dry brush you hit the first surface um, and you hit it with a you know the most amount of paint that's on your brush when you start so pick a spot that you think is going to need dry brushing of whatever you're trying to achieve whether it's highlighting or toning something down or whatever you know start in that spot like I, I'm choosing a really dark block edge here for the high brush for the dry brushing piece so that way I know I'm gonna have the most amount of effect and then the rest of this like this little spot in here that's fairly light I don't need to worry about bringing the highlights on that out too much because it's already fairly light. Also the top edges of the blocks, not just the raised edges, to give it the effect that of lighting on it. Um, I saw an article one time and I believe it was Model Railroad and they were talking about painting a building that uh, slightly darker shade under the porch so you're actually painting for light which I thought was a brilliant idea and I do try to uh, emulate that wherever I can this top surface here is the area where that's going to be getting direct sunlight so we definitely want to make this appear a little bit lighter if we're going to try to go after that so I'm kind of stippling this a lot as well kind of stabbing at it with my brush Clean it up. Clean your brush out a lot too. A little more paint in here. It's definitely a soft touch that you need for this. All right, I'm gonna tone down these real dark spots here a little bit. You can see I'm just dragging it across but there's almost no paint on my brush when I do it just the very edges so if it does cover it it covers it in really pale faint lines so I still don't like this really dark spot here I'm gonna may end up wiping out most of the dark stain on it A lot of layers. Got to keep doing it in in layers because if you do it all at once, it's going to look horrible. 
you're just going to get one big uniform color. difficult to paint the ends and keep it in the camera at the same time. But I'm trying. Alright. Get a little more paint on here. dump some paint in a few spots and then go back at it with a little bit of water move it around So you can see the, the wash underneath, the black stain, and then on top of that, the um, dry brushing, but it kind of got a little watery. So what you end up seeing is a couple different tones, even on single blocks. So um, got to be almost more of a wash towards the end there. So some of the paint went back down into the crevices, so we're going to go back and touch it up one more time. And we'll let this dark this darker paint just bleed around through all these little crevices. Just take your time, screw it up, go back, fix it again. Um, especially some areas like this here, you can see there's a chunk of the block missing, which I think adds a lot to the realism. It's not quite such a uniform wall that looks like it was molded in plastic and then somebody shot it with paint. This looks the uh, black wash. I'm going back over it. Some of the areas I think didn't do as good a job covering it as I did on the other side. I spent more time on the other side. Um, the other part about this wash, if you use a lot of water, it looks great when you first put it on, 
but once it has seeped into the cracks then it's collecting there and it looks nice and dark but as soon as you let it dry um, the black material in the fluid then settles in and then dries up and the next thing you know you've got an area that doesn't look like it really has any shadowing at all so going over it more than once is certainly not unexpected all right so I'm gonna finish this up go over a few of the spots I think that look like they're not really getting enough shadow um, let it dry and then we'll come back and we're gonna do a little bit of chalk dusting on this just to get some differences in the material and I think I'm gonna go back and dry brush right up in there I still think that's a little too dark so um, let me finish that up and then we'll uh, do some chalk dust alright so we're getting ready to do the chalk dust so I've already ground up a couple different colors here as you can see and most of it's just to kind of get a little bit different uh, shades in here now this is probably the most subtle stage of anything that we're going to do um, rather than taking a little bit of chalk dust and putting it on here like this um, it doesn't really show up very well so we're gonna paint with it a little bit I'm gonna drip my paintbrush in just a little bit of water put just a little bit of chalk dust on here and it looks like we're just painting it on as normal but we want to see a little bit of streaking like that uh, we just don't want it to be quite as vivid and then we're gonna spread it across the surface a little bit so it's pretty subtle you can kind of see a little bit of variety it's kind of hard to focus that but we're gonna go over the over the um, wall here the footer with a little bit of color and like I said it's going to be really subtle uh, once we shoot it with dull coat it will tone it down a little bit as well but all we're trying to do is get a little bit of streaking um, the lighter that you go for example if you were to use pure white on here um, it would be very difficult to see it and if you did you're almost better off dry brushing with a white color you can see that the yellow that I'm using really doesn't have any effect I have to go pretty heavy with it but it does give it kind of a light and dark shade a little bit um, in the past when I've taken a white powder the dull coat will pretty much wipe it out uh, it'll get to the point where you really can't even see it so you kinda have to go heavy on some of the lighter colors uh, white's almost it's difficult because you'll have to use several coats and even then I've found that it's almost impossible to tell that you've even put any on there So 
I just want to do a little bit of streaking on here and everything flows from that has been out in the weather it's all going to flow down the side but it's got to get there so we need to put a little bit on top here So there's a little bit of yellow tone there. Um, now the brown's going to show up great. And if I wanted to put black on here, which would be a little out of place, um, I could. Uh, rust is also great for showing up. Let's just do a couple of really small spots. And come back over it. And we're just going for a look. We just want to see that it's been outside in the weather. And that there's a little variety in it. We'll do a little bit on this side. You can see you can hit it with the color and then the the water will almost eliminate all your work so it's pretty forgiving if you're in here you're messing up so you don't want to go too heavy because if you do you're going to get it down inside the crevices that we've already worked on so I'm putting a little bit of yellow towards the bottom before we've already put a little bit of brown. Um, I'm pretty sure that once we shoot it with dull coat, the yellow is going to be completely gone. So the trestle footer is going to sit here. So I'm going to just put a little bit of rust in the corners. Probably won't even be able to see it. Um, but rust isn't really going to flow down the trestle. It's going to soak into the wood, but let's give a little variety. It's going to be difficult to see that at all. We can, however, go a little crazy with the the brown around the edges. Get some on there, and then we're going to dilute it quite a bit. Just make it look like there's been a little bit of sediment. Kind of leaves a little bit of a puddle. That's what we want. Come back and do a little bit more. I like the yellow. Gives it a little bit different tone, but I'm not going to overboard on the yellow. And then if you want to, you can take one single stone and highlight it. so they don't all look the same. But again, what we're doing is going to be really subtle. 
That one's too yellow. Got a little bit in the crevice here, so we're just going to try to get that to flow out with a little bit of water. Okay. Okay, so we've got a little bit of uh, streaking on that, just to give it a again just another layer of um, just subtle variation in the color, and if it looks like it's too much of a dark space then uh, just wipe it out with a little bit of water uh, when we spray this with dull coat it should fix it uh, it'll it'll mellow it out a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to uh, this other one and then we'll take a look where we're at if uh, we're happy with it, then we're going to glue the footers on the trestle. Okay, we got the uh, two footers glued on here. Um, just simple super glue plaster onto the wood. Um, gave it quite a bit of super glue because the super glue does soak into the plaster pretty heavily. So let me uh, put some still shots up and then you can see a little bit better what it looks like. Well, that should do it for this episode of Fun with Fallen Flags. Footers are in place. Got an engine on top, so that looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way that the uh, footers came out. And that was really the last piece of the trestle, other than placing it on a layout. So, uh, going forward, if you guys are interested, um, please look at the notes of this video below. There will be some links for uh, Facebook groups, uh, YouTube channel, and then any upcoming live sessions as well. So, hope you guys are out there having fun in the hobby. It's a great hobby and uh, very rewarding. And uh, we will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks you guys for joining. Take care.